friends, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Alyssa. We are changing course a little bit, not that you would really know because I don't tell you guys ahead of time what I'm posting, but I was planning on posting a recipe video today. We are changing things up and I'm going to be talking today about 18 different pantry staples that you can stock when it's a crisis or just in general. I think these are 18 things that are really good to have on hand. You can create healthy, vegan, plant-based, protein-rich meals out of these. Gives you a lot of flexibility. They are pretty shelf-stable. We do have a few things that might go bad or are perishable, but mostly they are just gonna last you a long time and they're things that I pretty much always have on hand at all times. They are also things that you can mostly buy online. So if your grocery store currently is out of stock of a lot of things, a lot of these things you can buy online and hopefully this video just kind of helps you during this time of need. I, If you are watching this in the future, I'm filming this while the coronavirus and COVID-19 is like exploding and I'm getting a lot of questions from people in the audience about what I should or what they should buy, what I bought, so I thought I would just film a video. So I hope you guys find it helpful. If you do have any questions along the way, make sure to leave them down in the comments and I'll also be linking products down below for you. A lot of them will be US based specific because obviously that's where I am. Um, so I'll be listing also some online retailers that you can buy groceries from online and tomorrow I think so this is going up on Tuesday the following day I will be creating a blog post that talks about some recipes that you can create using these pantry staples so enough yammering from me I think we're just gonna dive in and we're probably gonna zip through them pretty quickly because there's 18 of them on the list so let's just get started all right, so my first three actually all have to do with tomatoes. <laughs> They're just different kinds of tomatoes. So the first one is crushed tomatoes. I love using crushed tomatoes in sauces and soups and things that just like have a good tomato flavor, but don't you don't want chunks of tomato in. So I always have crushed tomatoes on hand. Number two is canned diced tomatoes. And I use diced tomatoes differently than I use crushed tomatoes. I use diced tomatoes a lot in chilies and soups. They have that obviously like chunks of tomato. So I really find them to be great in those kind of chunkier meals. Um, they're also really great in pasta if you wanted to make like a chunky tomato pasta, that would be delicious as well. Number three is tomato sauce. And what I mean by tomato sauce is like jarred marinara basically. And what I love about marinara is that it has a lot of different uses. You can make um, things like eggplant parmesan, you can make spaghetti, you can make lasagna, you can make pizza. And it's also just like really yummy. It's good for dipping, like if you wanna just heat some up and have it with crackers or something like that. I just think tomato sauce is pretty versatile and it's something that we make quite frequently at our house. And I always like to have a few different varieties on hand. So I like to have like a traditional marinara. Sometimes I have an arrabbiata, um, tomato basil, roast garlic. So there's lots to choose from and they're gonna last forever. Number four goes kind of along with all of these. It is pasta. Having dry pasta on hand is like, the best thing ever. We have tons of pasta on hand right now. I always like to have a variety of not only pasta shapes, but also pasta types. So I personally am a bean-based pasta lover. I love chickpea pasta and lentil pasta, just because it kind of like ticks two boxes at once. It ticks the pasta box, which is like so comforting and great and easy to make, but it also ticks the plant-based protein box. So you get, I think, anywhere between like 18 to 23 grams of protein per serving of these bean-based pastas. So that's really great. And then I also just usually have regular gluten-free pasta on hand and then my boyfriend, Matt, doesn't eat gluten, or doesn't eat gluten-free, so he will have just like regular spaghetti. So we usually have a bunch of different varieties and it gives us a lot of ways to use it and so that we're not feeling like we're eating the same thing over and over again. Number five is kind of a category, it's whole grains. I like to keep a few different whole grains on hand. I think my three staples would be white rice, definitely quinoa and then maybe like a wild rice blend. Um, but I think grains in general are just a good thing to have on hand, A, for like things like grain bowls, but adding them to salads, stir fries, and they last a really long time. They're fairly easy to cook. They're great for meal prep, and they're usually a really good way to bulk up a meal, also add in a ton of vitamins, and also get some 
complex carbohydrates, which means the grains digest more slowly in your system, which help to keep you a little bit more full. Number six is our main protein source, and it's beans. Beans are awesome because they come not only dry, so you can get dry beans that are gonna like last you forever. Um, I personally use dried lentils over dried chickpeas or dried black beans. I just love having beans on hand. So I typically have dried lentils and canned beans, and I'll have canned black beans, great northern beans, and chickpeas, those are our top three. But beans, obviously, they're a cheap protein source, they're an accessible protein source, and they are typically pretty easy to use in your meals, and they have a ton of different like varieties and uses. So that is my main protein source. Number seven is oats. I always have oats on hand. You guys see that I use oats in recipes constantly. I think it's great to have a dried breakfast option in case you can't get access to frozen fruit. Like right now, the frozen aisles are completely decimated in the grocery stores. Um, fresh fruit obviously goes bad and you could do canned fruit, but if you just want to have like a hearty breakfast oatmeal is affordable, accessible, and it will last you a long time. Number eight is nut butter. Nut butter is something that's always in my cabinet. I always have peanut butter and almond butter, usually have cashew butter, and then sometimes I'll have like a random nut butter that I might have made my own. Maybe it's a pecan butter or a mixed nut butter or something like that. I use nut butter for everything. I think it's great for snacks. I think it's great for mixing into oatmeal, mixing into smoothies. You guys know how to use nut butter. It's like the best thing ever. Number nine is shelf stable plant-based milks. So you can get most plant-based milks currently that are being sold almond, coconut, cashew, rice, soy, oat, all in shelf stable Tetra packs. So you can buy a couple and just keep them in their pantry. They don't have to be refrigerated. Obviously once they're opened, they have to be refrigerated, but this is a way for you to just have those in case you can't get access to the kind that are refrigerated. So I would recommend picking up a few boxes or cartons of shelf stable milks, just again, so you can have them on hand. And I also would lump canned coconut milk into that so you can make things like curries and coconut soups. You guys know that I use canned coconut a lot and I think it's something that is just like so versatile and delicious. Number 10 is veggie broth. I think that a great option for making a pantry kind of like clean out meal is a soup. And that definitely will be something that I talk about in the post that talks about how to make meals out of these things. But veggie broth is just like great to have on hand. It's a great way for you to stretch meals. It's a great way for you to add flavor to meals. And it's also shelf stable, similar to the non-dairy milk. So I think that having a couple cartons of veggie broth, or if you eat chicken, eating or having chicken broth or beef broth on hand is really great. The next three are actually going to be the ones that are a little bit more perishable. They're kind of produce items, I guess you can say, but we have potatoes and onion and garlic. I like having both regular white potatoes as well as sweet potatoes on hand. We love to roast sweet potatoes, but white potatoes we like to add into soups. You can make mashed potatoes. Just potatoes are awesome. They're like super comforting, so cozy. They're also easy to make, and like I said, they're also quite versatile. Onion for me and garlic are two things that I just use like with pretty much every single recipe that I make. I know that if you are on a low F FODMAP diet, they don't work for you. So you can leave these two off your list if you follow that kind of diet. But if you don't, for me, they are like the basis of a lot of flavor building in recipes. So if you have garlic and you can have onion, you can saute that, add it into your meals, and it just adds really good flavor and mm, so good. I can't imagine my life without onion and garlic. Number 14 is oils and vinegars. I'm kind of lumping these two things together because I feel personally that there's a lot that you can do with oils and vinegars. Not only can you make things like salad dressing, but they're also really good for cooking, using different oils to roast your vegetables, saute your vegetables. You can obviously do it without oil if you don't follow an oil or if you follow an oil-free diet. But for me, it's just something that we use in almost every single recipe and every single day. And then vinegar, whether it's apple cider vinegar, white vinegar, white wine vinegar, red wine vinegar, you can not only use those to flavor a lot of your meals, um, add some acidity into things, but you can also use them as all natural cleaning solutions. So mixing them with a little bit of water, they often disinfect things, especially apple cider vinegar and white vinegar. Those are the two that I personally would use for disinfecting. So 
during this period of time that I'm filming the video, they have a dual purpose, which is really great. And they're also affordable, which is awesome. All right, we're almost done with this list. We have four more things. Number 15 is healthy snacks. And again, this is kind of a broad category, but I didn't want to specifically mention just singular kinds of snacks because everybody likes different kinds of snacks. So having healthy snacks on hand is just... For me, it's a no-brainer. I always have gluten-free crackers. I always have rice cakes. I always have pretzels, gluten-free pretzels. I always have chips. Um, I often have nuts and seeds, sometimes trail mix. What other snacks do I like? And popcorn. We have a little air popper popcorn maker and we love making popcorn. So those are kind of my staples, but I would just say for you, just have some healthy snack options on hand especially if you're gonna have kids at home now, it's just good to have like healthy things that they can grab and snack on throughout the day. Number 16, I'm realizing I just kind of lumped into the last one, but I'm gonna pull it out as its own thing because I think they have a lot of uses, and that's rice cakes. I eat rice cakes for not only a snack, but sometimes I have them for breakfast. I think they can make a really quick and easy lunch option if you like top them with hummus and avocado and sprouts and tomato and all that stuff. I think that they are just like a really simple kind of bread alternative that are obviously like fairly affordable, naturally gluten-free, and pretty widely accessible. There's a lot of different brands out there and there are often options that are fairly inexpensive as well. Um, I actually saw a video on Pickup Limes. If you don't follow her, you should check her out. This video has nothing to do with her, but she does have a video on her channel that shows you how to like top rice cakes a bunch of different ways. So I'll link that down below because I think it gives you some really good ideas. Number 17 is vegan protein bars. I am a big bar lover. I just think that protein bars are delicious. I honestly really are, I'm only kind of sticking to one or two brands right now that I really like. I love Grow Macro bars. They're a little bit on the heavy side, so I don't usually have those as like a snack but they also make little minis, which I love as a snack. They're like a half of a Go Macro bar. And then my other favorite kind of bar is Raw Rev Glow Bars. I've talked about them a bunch on the channel before, but they are gluten-free, they're high protein, they're high fiber, and they're low sugar. So they are really great at like keeping you a little bit more full, and I love that they don't have a lot of sugar. They also have some really yummy flavors, as does Go Macro. So I'll link the those both below for you and you can check them out. I get mine on Amazon. I just think they're like the best and I get a bunch of different flavors. All right, and we are finally at the end of the list with number 18 and that is dark chocolate. I have a major sweet tooth in case you can't tell from following along on this channel. I share a lot of sweet treats, but I just like always have something sweet at the end of the day and sometimes throughout the day as well. So dark chocolate for me is a staple. My favorite brand right now is Hue Kitchen. I get it on Thrive Market, but you can basically choose any type of dark chocolate that you want. I would just make sure that if you are buying dark chocolate, try to buy organic and fair trade chocolate. And there's a lot of options out there. So if you do have access to that, definitely try to go for brands that are organic and fair trade. And I just think dark chocolate has like a lot of varieties. There's always like a room for something sweet in our diet. And I would recommend giving yourself a little bit of an indulgence from time to time, especially if it's a time of crisis like this. We all need something sweet. So that kind of does it for me. Those are 18 pantry stables that I recommend you have on hand. Again, we will be sharing a post that kind of details some recipe ideas that you can use making these types of ingredients or using these types of ingredients. And I will be sure to link that down below when we update it. Um, I think otherwise, I would just love to hear from you. If there is anything that you feel like I missed on the list, I didn't really dive into like fresh produce all that much. So I'm sure there are other things like bananas and avocados and oranges and lemons and limes and all that stuff that you could include in your pantry list. For me, I just wanted to stick to the most non-perishable things that I could. Um, so if there are anything that you feel like I missed, let me know down below so that we can all get a little bit more inspiration and keep adding to our list. I hope you guys found this helpful. If you have any other suggestions of types of content that you wanna see, while this kind of crazy stuff in the world is happening. And if you are watching this in the future, you're always welcome to leave suggestions for other types of videos that you wanna see down in the comments as well. 
any relevant links or articles or videos or products or blog posts that I mentioned in today's video will be linked down in the description box. So make sure to read that. I always leave all of the extras down there so that you guys can have as much resources as possible. Otherwise, thank you so much for being here. I really appreciate it. Again, I hope you found this video helpful. I do have a blog post that goes along with this, so I will link that down below for you as well. And stay safe out there, stay healthy, do what you can to protect yourself and your community. And yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.